My name is Joe Peroni, and this is the Rise Above Project. And this is my next installment on my series about how the misuse of screen time is killing our children. <laughs> and this is Lily <laughs> the Pug, and she's my special guest. So Lily, So Lily has been watching my previous shows, and she came up with a really good question for me. So I'm going to answer that question, and then I'm going to describe the problem in a little bit more detail. <laughs> and then I'm going to offer a prescription so we can now have a solution to the problem. So I'm not going to be able to do the whole show like this. So I'm going to put Lily in the other room and I'll be right back and I'll, I will answer Lily's question. She's a little tired. There you go. All right, so Lily had a question after watching the other shows. Lily wants to know, why does she get more exercise? Why does she have more fun? Why does she have more friends? Why does she have more toys? Why does she get to, to go to the park more often than, than most kids these days? I think that's a really good logical question, especially for a pug. So I wanna answer that. And here's part of the answer. It's because phones have been used to take the place of mothers, to take the place of fathers, to take place of family, to be babysitters. That's why. And to the detriment of children. Now think about it like this. So Lily, she's very well socialized. She's socialized with people, she socialized with animals. What if I just left her in a cage all day, basically, and then I let her out once in a while, and then I just showed her a picture of another dog, and then I showed her a picture of a person, and then I showed her a picture of a park, and a picture of a toy. Would there be any benefit from that? No, absolutely not. So why do we expect that with children? That we're just gonna sit them in front of these screens? And again, to go over some old material, a child's personality is formed by the time they're six years old. Again, by first grade. So if they're sitting in front of screens all day with inattentive parents, parents who are not present, parents that put them in front of this screen that does not interact with them at all, how do you expect them to have normal development in their life? They won't. Just the fact that the kid is born, there's an expectation that there's going to be attachment and connection. All human beings are wired for connection. That's how we've gotten here and we've lasted all these thousands, if not millions of years. When we see a newborn, there's definitely an expectation physiologically biologically, that there's going to be a loving connection where they can develop trust and they can start to know that they're worth something. And yet, since about 2007, with the invention of these, people somehow think that this is the new way to raise children. And we've, we're seeing incredible problems with this. So what I'd like to do today, and I have talked about some of the negative symptoms that we're seeing, I really want to drill down on this to make it crystal clear about what's happening. So I'm a professional, I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and, but there's many different types of mental health clinicians out there. We've got teachers, you've got people from Silicon Valley who are definitely professionals who would say that screen time, especially excessive screen time, is detrimental to kids. What I want to do today, I want to show you 
an assessment. So let me get to that. Here's your basic assessment. Not every mental health clinician uses the same assessment, obviously, but they're basically the same. And you can go through it, and there's a checklist, and we can see if people meet the criteria for certain, say, mood disorders or personality disorders or other mental health issues. And so let's go over that with the thought that I would be seeing the average type of child or young adult who spends way too much time on screens, playing video games, on TikTok, and you name it, this type of thing, the thing that I've been talking about the last multiple shows. Let's take it from the top. Substance abuse history. Young people who get addicted to screens and social media, they're already learning how to be addicted to things which takes their mind off of living a real life. And instead of facing their anxiety and fixing their problems, they get addicted to doing something mindless. So does this pave the road for them to have addictions later on in their life? And what we found is yes. So we can't say that excessive screen time causes substance abuse, because that's, that's too much. However, it is correlated highly, and we are seeing an increase in substance abuse. Now, I think we're all familiar with the heroin epidemic because there is one. However, there's also an alcohol epidemic and there's every other kind of drug you want to name epidemic. It's insane how high the, the amount of substance abuse is in this country right now. We could also talk about marijuana abuse. Now, it used to be that people use marijuana as a uh, recreational drug to hang out with their friends, get a little bit loose, have a good time. Is it that anymore? It's almost like people wake up in the morning, they have a glass of orange juice, eat a donut, and then they, they're already doing marijuana. Like, it's not for recreational use. It's that they literally have to use it. You know, it's like in that Aljous Huxley book, uh, Brave New World, excuse me, Brave New World, where anybody who has any hint or a slight type of feeling or emotion, you need to kill it. You need to kill it right away. And we're seeing this. This starts at a very young age with already showing people how to be addicted to get out of their brain so they're not thinking about important things or solutions, and they go right to an addiction. So can we say that there's definitely a correlation between screen time and substance abuse later on? Yes. Moving on, suicide, uh, suicidal ideations. Uh, yes, we're seeing an increase in suicidal ideations. We're seeing an increase in suicide attempts, and unfortunately, some of them are actually committing suicide. And this rises with the use of screen time. So the answer to that is yes. Continuing, uh, a level of paranoia and suspicion. Paranoia might be a little too strong of a word, but when we're looking at suspicion, we're looking at a basic mistrust of people. Now, if you are not good with social interactions, you don't have very many connections with other people because you're used to a screen, and every time you see a person, it's anxiety producing, it's true. Your trust in people goes down. So you will not trust people, and I see this on a regular basis as well as pretty much every other mental health clinician. Moving on. Depression, yes, screen time, again, definitely uh, happens with more screen time. Are these kids angry? Absolutely. They, they don't not know how to handle their emotions. They go straight to a very low level response. They don't know how to communicate correctly with people, so they just go right to a very childlike anger. Do they have extreme highs in mood and lows in mood? Yes speaks so that they don't know how to manage their emotions. Loss of interest, absolutely. They're not very interested in anything, unless of course it's playing a video game, then they could focus on that all day long. Are they interested in sports and all these things? Obviously some are, but with more screen time, they become less interested in things because they have no self-esteem and they're afraid to try new things. 
And so because of their low self-esteem, they don't want to try it and not be good at it. So they never try anything at all. They don't have the ability to fail and to continue moving in a correct direction. They have very little ability to overcome adversity and challenges. Low energy? Absolutely. Sitting around all day, uh, becoming sedentary now is becoming a very normal thing, especially with kids and especially if you set them up with screens. Think about what we are talking about uh, with Lily before. She likes to run, jump, play. She likes to do all these toys and she's got you know, dog friends and everything else. She probably wouldn't be as interested if I just held up a picture of another dog holding a toy. Like, right? Like, it just makes sense. Come on, it's common sense here. Is there difficulty in sleep patterns? Absolutely, we see this all the time. Part of this, obviously, is excessive screen time. But it's also very low-level parenting. Very bad parenting. The, the, why parents would allow their kids to have cell phones and access to media and screens when they should be going to bed. I mean, when you're young, you really only have one job, right? It's to get a good night's sleep and then to be able to be prepared to go to school, to start learning things. And uh, we're seeing these kids all the time. They're going to school in half a day because they're not getting any sleep at night. The interesting thing here is, is that when children are going to school and they're completely lacking in sleep because they're doing nothing by staying on their screens, it mimics ADHD symptoms. You can't concentrate on things when you're tired and you're falling asleep at your desk. So then what happens is somebody is going to diagnose them with ADHD and then they're gonna start taking psychotropic meds when all they need is a good night's sleep. And how do they get that? By their parents actually being parents and getting rid of the screens. Moving on. Do they have feelings of worthlessness? Absolutely. They won't say it like that, but they definitely have low self-esteem. They're afraid to connect with people. They're afraid to try new things. And they're just scared to death of being wrong or being bad. And they don't want to take chances with anything. So, yeah, and we're seeing it again, going back to the beginning. Suicidal ideations, suicide attempts. There's almost no self-esteem here. And there's a reason for that. Because they have nothing to be proud of. They're not doing anything. In order to have self-esteem, you, you have to have a, a general self-assessment that you are a competent human. And they know that they're not competent. They can't even talk to people. They know that they're, they're not competent at all. Being uh, a, a, a relatively good uh, Minecraft player, or whatever you want to call it, does not substitute for mastery. And even deep down inside, they know that as well. Moving on. Do they have intense anxiety? Absolutely. You know, life itself is, is just way too tough for these kids. Again, because they're not facing reality, they're facing screens. They don't know what it's like to connect to a world, a world to challenge a world, to be pushed back a little bit. They know they have to push forward again. It, it's, uh, again, yes. Excess screen time causes anxiety in children. Absolutely. Are they able to finish activities that they start? Typically, no. Do they lose things and forget to do things more than the usual? Yes. Are they easily distracted? Yes. Are they able to listen? No. Are they disorganized? Yes. Again, you're, you're checking all the boxes here for ADHD as well. Uh, do they worry a lot? Yes. Uh, thoughts that don't stop? Absolutely. Do they avoid people and are they withdrawn? Absolutely. They're afraid of social connections. I've been going over this over and over again and you, you'll, you'll see it keeps popping up. The fact that they can't talk to people, that when they say that they have a friend, really what they mean is they're playing a video game with somebody that typically is not in the same room as them. They might be in a whole different country. They might be in a different state. And like, oh yeah, my, my friend is really good at Grand Theft Auto. Your friend? You see numbers moving on a screen. That's it. It's not a friend. You don't learn to share. You don't learn to trust. You don't learn to do anything other than just keep playing with the joystick or whatever the heck it's called. Uh, are they able to relax? No. Do they overreact? Absolutely all the time. Uh, continuing, do they often lose their temper? Are they resentful? Are they spiteful and vindictive? 
uh, yes, 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 and yes, and yes again. Why? Because inside they're angry. They have no mastery over anything. They don't really have any meaning and purpose. They don't have a point of view in life where they're trying to actually care about something to move into a correct direction. And once again, they're emotionally dysregulated. Are they sensitive and touchy? Now, I don't mean that they cry at sad movies. No, because that would be empathetic and compassionate. No, that's not them. We're moving to the direction of are they offended easily? And the answer to this is yes. They're overly sensitive, overly touchy, and they're easy to offend because they can't stand having somebody else have a different opinion than them. Why? Because they're not used to being able to have an exchange of ideas with another human being. So it's so off-putting that, again, it's another dent to their self-esteem. Oh my God, I must be a terrible person. I can't deal with this. So again, they can't have conversations. And if you can't do that, you cannot develop meaningful relationships. Eating disorders. This is interesting. We are in the middle of an obesity epidemic as well. What is that tied to? Being sedentary, sitting around, watching screens, not doing physical activity. Why don't they do physical activity? Because they're scared. They don't want to get hurt. Oh my God. Like when you're a kid, you're supposed to play. You're supposed to be joyful. You're supposed to test your boundaries. You should be climbing trees, doing things, you know, pushing other people around, knowing how strong you are, how strong you're not. And these types of things, these kids are not doing that. And because of that, they are unable to hold a healthy body weight at a young age. So they are looking at uh, diabetes and its complications as they get older. Continuing, again, starting fights, so they assault people. Uh, again, you can't say it's a direct correlation, but th there is definitely a, a correlation there because they are aggressive, they are annoyed, they are frustrated all the time. They don't, they don't feel good about themselves. It's like orange juice theory. If you squeeze an orange, the only thing that can come out of it is orange juice. So when you see a kid who acts out, he's incredibly uh, emotionally dysregulated, throws tantrums, throws things around the house, very angry all the time. What's inside? The same thing, right? So what you're seeing all that anger and that petulance, that just that frustration and annoyance is somebody who has no power over themselves and no power over the world and doesn't feel connected to the world in any way, shape or form. Moving on. Sexual disorders. We're seeing this in young people too. And by young, I mean like 15 to say uh, 25. It's interesting because in normal human development, uh, sex is probably something all you think about once you hit puberty, right? Or, you know, you're starting to go through adolescence into your, your late teens, into your 20s. Now, there's evidence out there that shows that people around, say, 18 to 25 are having less sex, or let's say men in general. Men between 18 to 25 years old are having less sex than men in their 50s and 60s. Oh, what's going on here? Like we're literally culturally screwing over children's or young adults' biology, and it's directly related to the screens. Again, they're scared to death of an actual human being connection. That's number one. And number two, they probably were introduced to porn at a young age, and they don't know nothing about trying to please another human being. The only person they know how to please is themselves. And it was way past their developmental age, or well, well before it. Um, you can't start watching porn at 8, 9, and 10 years old, which is, is what's happening in the United States these days. Continuing, are they overly dependent? Absolutely, yes. Are they passive? Uh, in some ways, definitely, because they're afraid to make any moves. They're afraid to do anything. They don't have a direction. So yes, they're passive. Do they self-harm? Absolutely. The self-harming behaviors of young adults is skyrocketing and no shock there. Do they rage out of control and have extreme mood swings? Uh, yes to both of those. Again, no ability to manage their emotions or feelings. Do they lack empathy? We went over this at another show. Uh, the screen time definitely changes the structure of a young person's brain because it had, the brain has plasticity. 
if you're watching screens too much, your empathy goes down and your brain structure will change. And so yes, we're seeing a complete lack of empathy from young people. So they fear rejection and fear abandonment. Uh, absolutely they do. They may not say it, but it's all in their actions and behaviors. And why do they fear rejection and abandonment? And here we go back to parenting. It's because they were rejected and abandoned. Every child needs to be loved, supported, cared about by their caregiver. And if you're holding up a screen thinking that that's taking the place of something, you're wrong. So are you abandoning or rejecting your child when you give them a screen instead of talk to them, instead of listen to them, instead of engaging with them? Yes, that's parenting 101. Your parenting sucks if you're using a screen to raise your child and they will feel abandoned and rejected. And the reason is, is because they're correct. They're right. You are abandoning them. Continuing, are these children attention seeking and overly dramatic? Absolutely, I just finished saying that. They're trying to connect with people. They're, they're trying to have that nurturing bond. They want that attachment. So they're always gonna try to do things to get somebody else's attention. Unfortunately, in this world, it's much easier to do negative things to get attention than it is to do positive, right? In some ways, there might be only one correct way to do something, but there's a thousand and one ways to do it wrong. So you're, you're actually pushing your kid to go out, they're gonna go out of their way to get attention by doing wrong things. Again, parenting 101, this needs to be changed. Continuing, do they have an interest in people and relationships? No, not really. They're scared to death of them because they're not used to, again, that connection with other people. So they're very afraid. Now, they may want to have a relationship, but they have no ability to do it. And just the thought of having a relationship or a meaningful conversation raises their anxiety to a level that's way too high for them to actually make a move. So typically, they'll go back to playing video games or they'll go smoke some more marijuana. Not good coping skills at all. Are they narcissistic? <laughs> you know, I almost want to laugh here, of course, right? They're narcissistic to the core. It's all about them all the time. Here's my screen. I, I don't want to watch this anymore. Switch, switch, switch. I mean, what are these TikTok videos? How, how many minutes are they or seconds? You know, everything is about what they want, instant gratification at that time. If they don't like it, they don't hear it, they, can, they don't want to hear something, they just move on. And that's just the way it is. So I could do this all day, and I've already taken 22 minutes, so let me try to hurry up here. Here's the point. If you are dealing with a mental health clinician, they would be able to tell you that all these signs and symptoms that you see from kids with their screen time, it would lead them to pretty much be able to be diagnosed with every single thing that's in the DSM. So if you continue to listen to professional, hear a professional, if they make believe you don't hear it, that's on you and your fault because there's way too much evidence out there. Listen to the professionals. You don't know more than them. Let's continue. There are ways to deal with children in ways that do not have to do with screen time. Who would have thought, right? Let's go back to some old school stuff. I can do this all day, so let me just go through a few and I'll go through as fast as possible. Use your imagination. Make paper airplanes out of colored paper. Cut out paper dolls and accessories from newspapers. Create doll houses and furniture out of felt pieces. Build skyscrapers out of Legos and Tinker Toys. Use large cardboard boxes to create kid-sized houses that they can decorate. Actually, that, that sounds fun to me. How about go outside, like Lily would say, right? Go for a walk. Take a walk around the neighborhood with the dogs. Uh, make a family of snow people. It's cold outside now. Maybe there's snow. Play a game of tic-tac snow. Ice cube scavenger hunt. Uh, play card games like Uno, Hearts, or Rummy. Dice games. Uh, bring out the board games like Monopoly or Sorry. Uh, play, tape a tic-tac-toe board on the floor and use colored bean bags for the X's and O's. That sounds like fun. I, I remember people used to play hopscotch. We used to uh, jump rope. We used to make games to do a decathlon because we thought we were all in the Olympics. We thought we were all athletes, so we would make up 10 different events around town and we'd get all the local kids to play. Why don't we do this anymore? Oh, because there's crime? No, crime is extremely low right now, especially compared to the 70s and 80s. So don't give me that excuse. 
That's Bad Parenting 101 again. Put together a model car, model train, model plane. I'm sounding like Dr. Seuss at this point. Work on a puzzle. Uh, set up a home lab and create some science experiments. Play a word search. How about go to a library and see these things? It's called books, right? Like you can hold a book and you can get into it and you can read through it. Not just scroll through and just find the one thing that you need and, or Google something for an answer that you'll never remember the answer later on. And so you're not gaining any actual knowledge, right? Like people think Google helps you with your knowledge. Not when you're young, it doesn't. You don't even know what to look up in the first place because you, you, you're not intellectually curious, right? So let's move on. Play road trip games without ever leaving the house. How about name that tune, turn on the radio and see how quickly you can identify songs. Describe something in the house so the other players can guess what it is. Play the alphabet game. Name animals, foods, athletes, starting with the letter A, B, and C, and so on. Mad Libs. Play bingo. Look through old photo albums so your, your children can learn about your family and care about other humans. What a thought, right? Ah, uh, bake cookies, sing karaoke, have a dance party, listen to a book on CD. Get crafty, build structures with marshmallows. That sounds fun. Uh, go bowling. Play indoor laser tag, head to an indoor pool or an outdoor pool, uh, paintball, rock climbing, teach your dog a new trick, Easter egg hunt, use watercolors to paint a summer sky, and so on and so on and so on and so on. You get the point. The first thing you need to do, no kid should be having one of these, especially when they're alone scrolling through whatever. That's the thing. So get rid of it and start being parents again and let your kids develop the way that they were supposed to, the way they have been for the last million years or so. So this show is like 26 minutes long. I have another section of the show that I would like to do, but I'm gonna cut the show here to, so the show doesn't get too long. But I'm gonna show you some anecdotal evidence that I have from kids who were before all the social media and iPhones. And I'm gonna show you some anecdotal evidence that I have. So that'll be in the very next show. I think I'll be wearing the same clothes for that because I'm gonna record it right now. But I wanna end this show before 30 minutes because I know people have instant gratification issues. So thanks for listening and I hope you all liked Lily. Uh, my name is Joe Peroni again. This is the Rise Above Project. If you find it valuable at all, please subscribe and tell a friend. Thank you.